Hey guys, I have here a MPP Solar PIP 2424LV-MSD inverter. I purchased this directly from MPP Solar for some upcoming projects I'll be working on. Before I get into those projects, I wanted to do a very brief overview of this inverter, showing you the outside, inside, and a little bit of the software, just so I can avoid having to do that in those videos themselves. So this is just going to be a super quick look at this. I'm not going to do any extensive load testing or anything like that. Uh, but I will pull the cover off and show you what's inside as well as go over some of its features. So I ordered this on August 12th. It was $580 and today is August 17th. So this took less than a week to get here uh, all the way from Taiwan. So we got a little bag of cables here. We have a serial COM port cable, a USB cable, a CD which has our software and some mounting brackets and a very basic user's guide. Oh. It's very simplistic packaging, but it is packaged very well from damage on all sides. Bag. All right, so here we have it. This is the PIP 2424LV-MSD. And this is a very nice enclosure this is built in here. So here are some of the specs. Uh, temperature is good from 0 to 55 Celsius, 3,000 volt amps or 2,400 watts. Uh, to 24 volt input up to 112 amps. The outputs 120 volts and it can be either 50 or 60 hertz. And unlike the PCM60X which is up to 60 amps, this one is rated for 80 amps. So on the rightmost side here you can see we have a very basic power switch and we have an air vent with a nice filter which is great. That's going to prevent dust from getting in the inverter. And on the left hand side we have the same vent with filter as well. Alright, so on the bottom here you can see two average size fans. They look like probably 80 millimeter if I had to guess. On the top left we have the AC input, ground line neutral, and the AC output line and neutral. We have an AC input breaker. There's no rating on it visible from the front, but I'm going to guess it's probably a 50 amp. A chassis grounding screw. The battery positive and negative input. Now with this inverter being over 100 amps uh, rated current, I would have expected slightly larger terminal blocks, but uh, we have an RS-232 communications port and a USB communications port. And we have a 3-pin relay over here, uh, common, normally closed, and normally open. I'm guessing you would wire this to like a generator if you want an emergency generator to click on or something like that once the batteries are depleted. And then we have the PV input over here on the top right. It's all fairly standard connections, nothing too fancy or special here. So next we'll remove the front cover and see what we can see inside. Uh, there are two screws on the left and right here for this bottom black piece and there are a series of screws up the side of the case and on the top to remove this top faceplate. And you can see there's a ribbon cable that connects the display on the front of this lid so you need to be very careful you do not tear that. Here we can have a look at the components inside the inverter. Uh, so one of the first things I noticed are these very large heat sinks where the MOSFETs are. There are some electrolytic capacitors and a big transformer in the center. And there's a very large fuse down here. This is a 58 volt 200 amp fuse. And it is bolt on so you can replace it though that's not a standard fuse size from what I can tell. At least not one that I'm familiar with. Maybe you guys know what that is. Uh, on the left here both the input and output are 12 gauge conductors. This is rated for a maximum of 40 amps input and output, so I would have liked to see something a little thicker than number 12, but number 12 is certainly acceptable for chassis uh, wire ratings since this is inside an enclosure. In the front here there are two 40 amp fuses, which go all the way to the back. I believe this is the MPPT charge controller back here, so these fuses are probably for the built-in charge controller. All in all, looking at the wiring, the connections, the solder joints, it looks fairly decent quality. I have no complaints about the internals of this unit. I don't see anything that's done messy or unclean or anything like that, potentially dangerous, so. All right, so I got a super simple setup here uh, just for testing this thing out. I have two 12 amp, 12 volt lead acid batteries, and they're connected in series to form 24 volt. And those are connected to my inverter through a 15 amp fuse with 10 gauge copper wire. In addition, I also have my clamp meter on here just so we can measure a couple of things. Obviously, in a production setup, you would want a much larger battery bank and much thicker wire. 
Um, that's why I only have a 15 amp fuse here because I'm not planning to pull 100 amps or whatever through it. And actually these batteries are pretty much depleted. So this is just gonna be a short, quick test to show you how the inverter works and how you can configure the software for it. Now, some people like to pre-charge these with a resistor ahead of time to avoid the inrush of current when you first connect it, charging the capacitors and the inverter. I don't typically worry about that. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. Close the fuse holder. Uh, it sounds like the pre-charge resistor is much more important when you're using lithium batteries that have a much higher current potential. And when I turn this on, you're going to hear a somewhat obnoxious beep, just a warning. And you can hear the fans have kicked on, and it was up just over an amp. It's now dropping down to 0.73. And you can see it's still starting up. The AC output has not engaged yet. There it goes. So we're reading 120 volts output and zero volts input because we don't have the AC connected. So idling with no load here, we're pulling 2.39 amps. So we have 2.39 times 24 volts is 57.36 watts. That is the number one reason I haven't used these inverters in my battery shed is because they do have a high idle current. But one inverter idling at 58 watts and then you would need, what, four of these? to add up to the 10 kilowatt of my aims. So if you were to get three more of them, you would be up to 230 watts of idle. They just aren't practical for large systems in my opinion, but they certainly are perfectly fine for small systems. So let's just uh, double check the AC output here that we're getting. And we have 120.2 volts AC, which is near perfect 120. So to configure the settings for this, I'm going to plug in the USB cable. And I've opened the watch power application that it has come with. And you can see here the utility is blinking because I do not have the input connected. So I'm going to select the charger on the left here. Go up to configuration. Uh, buzzer alarm, I want it disabled. That's the obnoxious beeping when you first turn it on. Click apply. And for the first login, the password is administrator, all lowercase. Click it again, save successfully. Power saving mode disabled, backlight, overload reset. There's a whole bunch of settings you can go through here. So charge source priority, I'm going to set it to solar first because I'm not going to have the AC plugged in. So this is where you would uh, configure it whether you want it to be like an UPS. If it's an UPS, you know, the inverter would only click in if you lost power. In that case, you would want utility to be priority. Output mode, we're in single phase, 120 volts. You can also parallel multiple these inverters together to get a higher amount of output or do three phase as well. Output frequency, 60 hertz since we're in the United States. And this is where you would define your charging parameters to match your battery as well. There's a few more settings, beep settings, bypass settings, fault code. Output voltage is 120 volts. You can also set it to 110, but 120 is the standard. So on this screen, you can also see a little bit of information about the inverter, all the output characteristics, voltage, the amps, the watts. And after this inverter has been running for a while, it is still pulling 2.25 amps from the battery, which comes out to 54 watts. So it seems 54 watts is the idle power of this inverter. I would say a good chunk of which is powering these fans. However, something else interesting that's worth noting is these fans are blowing air down and out. Um, that's a bit odd because normally heat rises and you'd want the fans to blow air in the upward direction. But that also explains why they have the filters up here because these are actually air intakes, not exhaust ports. I have heard some people turn these fans around, that way they're blowing up. However, that's going to render the vents useless. So if you wanna do that, that is something to keep in mind. So I had flipped the switch off and it sounds like it's still shutting down. I still hear the fans running and the display is still lit, even though I had turned the switch off. So I'll wait a few more seconds here to see what happens. All right, so that's gonna conclude this quick little video here. Like I said, I just wanted to do a very quick overview of this device. I know you may have wanted to see some load testing, but that will be coming up in upcoming projects. I'd love to hear what you think of this device, especially if you already own one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching.